Scarlowy made a face. Not again, Nancy, please. Just a teeny polish, she coaxed. You must look nice for your hundredth birthday. I am nice. You're just being a fuss pot. And you're a horrible old crosspatch. Nancy polished him vigorously. Scarlowy smiled. Nancy, he said, I really was a crosspatch once. Should I tell you? Yes, please. Well, come down. I can't tell it properly while you're fussing about up there. Just five minutes then. No longer. Nancy sat down on the box, and the old engine began. Talyn, Dolgoch, Reneus and I were built together in England. Who? asked Nancy. But Talyn and Dolgoch. Talyn is my twin. Dolgoch is Reneus's. Their railway is a Tawin in Wales, and they're 102. They were green, and we were red. Talyn and I had four wheels then, and no cab. We thought we were wonderful, and talked about how splendid we'd look putting coaches. What about trucks? asked Nancy. Scarlowy chuckled. We had no use for them, he said. I was finished first, and sent away on a ship. I didn't like that. It wobbled dreadfully. At the port, the big railway kept me waiting. They had no cranes to lift me out. It wasn't the fat controller's railway then. He would have managed much better. What did they do? Asked Nancy. They used the ship's dead X. They nearly turned me upside down, said Scarlowy indignantly, and left me hanging while they arranged the truck. <laughs> you must have looked funny, gurgled Nancy. Yes, and I felt it too. I got crosser and crosser. They fastened me to the truck at last, and an engine took me away. His name was Neil. He was ugly, but kind, and we were soon friends. Sure you're buying for the railway, we? He said. You must put some order into those trucks. They have as they make you'd hardly believe. I didn't like the sound of that, but I was too tired to say anything. Plenty of people were waiting when we got there, but they weren't used to engines, and it was dark before I was on my rails. Then they left me, lonely and unhappy, and wishing Renaeus would come. Trucks were everywhere next morning. Suddenly, with a rattle and a roar, a train of loaded ones came in. I was surprised. There's no engine, I said. A workman laughed. <laughs> They've come down by gravity. The empty ones need putting up, though. That's why you've come. But can't they go up by gra... Whatever it was you said. Gravity only brings things down. We need horses or engines like you to pull them up. What? Have I to pull trucks? Of course. I won't. I want coaches. He just laughed and walked away. Soon Mr. Mac, the manager, arrived with some men. He showed them my parts from a book. We're going to steam you, Scarlowy, he said. Can I pull coaches, sir? No, certainly not. I gave him such a look. They didn't understand engines, so it was easy. My fire wouldn't burn and I made no steam. I just blew smoke at them. They called me bad names, but I didn't care. Next day they tried again. And the next. And the next. I just gave them my look and wouldn't do a thing. At last the manager said, Very well, be a cross pouch. But we're not going to look at your sulky face all day. We'll cover you up and leave you till you're a better engine. They did too, chuckled Scarlowy. They fetched a big tarpaulin and covered me right up. I didn't like that at all. I think it served you right, said Nancy severely. Never mind her, Scarlowy. Please tell us what happened next. Nancy turned in surprise. A group of people had quietly come up to listen while Scarlowy was telling her a story. Perhaps another time. I've got to go and take my train now, but I'll tell you all about it tomorrow, he said, and rushed off to fetch his train.